Welcome back, guys, to the back nine lead card of the 12th annual Smash Memorial presented by Haviland. We are out here at Big Chuck in Stanton, Michigan. I'm joined again with Jared Rittersdorf. How's it going, everybody? Luke is holding on to his lead. Um, neg five is the hot round through four. There's six people tied at neg five for the hot round. So as the leader shooting the hot round, you can't really catch him. Dan's lost one. I've moved up a spot. But still lots of golf left. Hole 10, this is another short little hole. It's 227 feet. You can kind of throw like a, a low, overstable skip shot to get up there, or you can kind of do kind of like a high hyzer. Um, they also have cleared out a little bit right here. Looks like you're kind of going for just a straight. Yeah, I'm going the low inside hyzer. Yep. I got the skip down, but I just caught a tree, second level. Looks like you had some rollback. Yep. Oh, is he going roller? Or what uh, is? He's going, I think, uh, turnover forehand. Or no, forehand roller, yep. So last May, we had a tournament out here, and this was my play then, but they've cleared up a lot more of the air shot. And easy does it. Little backstop for a two. Yeah, definitely a solid play. They've cleared up a lot of the ground, too, so it's definitely an easier roller than it used to be. Dan was going high air shot, but it just kind of looked like it came out of the little soft, a little high. Was it early even? Maybe? Yeah. Okay. I think he was trying to go a little, a little push that fairway a little more. And I think Zach's going a similar line to me, but he went uh, cap wrap and just got more of that skip. Yeah, so he'll have pretty open putt, maybe a straddle right there. So this will probably end up being a three here. He looks like he's pretty far out. Yeah, looks like a 45, 50 footer. Yep. Lots of trees in the way. Oh yeah, you're back a little ways too. You got. Yep. A little bit of work here. Didn't didn't hate my bid, and I knew that bush was right behind to catch it, so. Then we got Zach here putting from him. Edge of circle probably, a little uphill. Oh, popped it a little too high right there. Yeah, that roller was pretty cool to see right there, and then it, you got pretty lucky hitting that tree to keep him right there inside the circle for an easy putt. Yeah, coming out back nine, getting another stroke back. I think yep. he's going to push his lead to three with eight holes left. Yep, looks like you got a little little straddle right here to get your three. Yeah, once you mess your tee shot up there, there's there's just so many trees protecting the green, it's hard to get a long one to yep. even have a fair, fair bit at it. Pushing hole 11, par 3, 276 feet. This is probably the hardest hole in the back nine just because of the, the tee shot is so demanding. And then it's an elevated basket with a slightly sloped green, and it opens up to the wind. So hard tee shot and a tricky, uh, tricky green that can really just steal some strokes on you. You're going to see a lot of different ways to attack this. He's going a little flex forehand. Gets through, catches that low ceiling. Yep, and the backhand is another another good one. Is that what you're going with right Yeah, here? I'm going backhand, like a stable stable fairway just to push the low ceiling. Basically just get left of that tree in the middle of the fairway. I really liked it. Uh, I got up there pin high somewhere. These trees right off the bat, right off the tee are probably only three three feet on the right side and eight feet on the left yeah it's very demanding off the tee pad because it makes you think about how you want to do your run up um i i actually opt to do a standstill just because kind of take the equation a little bit of the footwork out of it <laughs> yeah it looks like he uh pushed up there pretty well too i like the fairway play just because you get uh more of the push on the low ceiling. That was looking really good, and it looked, yeah, that's unfortunate. Solid bid, dead center, just high, and got that roll away. And this is a tricky green. Yeah, I'm putting pin high, probably only 20 feet, but just from a bush. You just never quite gave it enough, because uh, after seeing Luke sail that hill, you definitely don't want to miss high. Exactly. 
Zach's in a similar spot. Just it's just a nervy little putt. Yeah, he's open, but the confidence level you have to be putting pretty good right here because if you miss, you can get that roll away. Yep, so. and that's the typical miss right there. Luckily, he's right underneath it. Not much to worry about. Great yep. putt right there by Tree. He does two or three little routine warm-ups with his arm, and then this that nose up and puts it in there. Yep, good four save there. That's just, like I said, it's easy to leak a, a shot off the tee, and the green can get you two. So make two mistakes on the same hole, and you're looking at a five. Yeah, this, this hole has a little bit of uh, complications that you can run into on it, and you saw a few of them there. So hole 12, this is considered a par four, 400, 481 feet. It, uh, your initial shot, you're kind of throwing over this wetland area right here, and then you want to shoot through these trees right here, so you'll end up going right through here. That sign in the tree kind of points you in the direction. That's not necessarily Mando. We did not play it as a Mando during the tournament. That was just kind of pointing you in the direction. And you want to land up here, finish past this tree right here up in the open, then it's just kind of an easy up shot. You can really do anything from there and work your way up and hopefully get yourself an easy tap in three. Yeah, this is where the course really opens up and the wind, it's always windy out here and it always comes into play in this back nine, back section of the back nine. But it's definitely someone with the, the distance of like a Luke Taylor or Nick Robertson or even maybe Nick Gill. Yeah, you can give yourself a putt for your two. Yeah, and it is slightly uphill so that 480 will play a little longer, but you, like Jeff said, you can definitely, you can push it and get a good circle two look or closer depending on if you have that arm yeah i like that i flipped it up through the gap with a grace and uh it looks like i caught one of the little pine trees in the fairway up there yep step one is just to get through because you have a couple different gaps right there you can go through the the center gap or you can push it around the right as well and it looked like he wasn't really committed to either and luke hates it because he's a perfectionist but it's far it's far up there. He's fine. Yep, he'll just have an easy approach and then tap in. He just leaked that one a little bit right, but it just kind of popped through that tree because he threw it so hard. And So this is this is one of the things you can run into. If you don't get step one off the tee pad, get it through, then you're going to be having to scramble, which looks like he can still get some distance off it to get it up there. So he can, he can still conserve his uh, four for this hole. So He kind of put himself in a bad spot there. Um he probably hindsight once he sees where his lie is he probably should have just chipped up if he did a backhand right there put him up to uh circle two ish i believe looking for his saving his three. Oh, so yeah I, I see what you're saying he landed over here yeah he just kind of he got down on a roller angle and the wind just kind of put kept him going left but dan's never met a low ceiling he hasn't liked with that super smooth kind of like nose up spin shot it's so clean I have this kind of weird lie behind the pine tree, so I'm just going big turnover forehand with a slightly overstable zone, just pan out flat. Yeah, so here's another two look right here. So it looks like he's just kind of going to work a little jumper or step putt, if you will. Yeah, he likes that hyzer from far. Yeah. Yeah, that was not a bad bit at all. Dead center, hit the band. He knows he can get it. Ooh, good little flat yeah. ballard there. That would have been money about five feet higher. And then here's my three look. If I'm getting here for three every time, I'm pretty happy. Leak that one a little right, but... Corner right pocket, and yep, it's stuck, so... to getting those, those thick gauge metal down there. Dan here to save his four. Yep, and he got it. Definitely a good four from that weird spot. He put himself underneath that little sapling over there. And then we got the tap in three from Luke. Yep, so as you can see, two different holes Luke has had uh, two putts on. And this this course is kind of a shorter course. And you can, it's, it's more for beginners and intermediates where a lot of people can get those eagle looks with the, uh, with the distance throwers. Yeah, a lot of them, if you're, if you're following the fairway, it's true. They are pretty fair par fours, but when you have that next level of distance to just kind of go over the stuff, 
um, it just brings in that even more. So par 4, 13, 390. This one is a tight tunnel, low ceiling-ish off the tee, and then we got this hanging basket on your approach shot. Um, so really you just want something that, that goes straight with a, maybe a little bit of turn at the end um, if you're not really pushing for the for the two. So I leaked mine right a little bit, got a favorable kick, and actually pushed past those trees. Yep, and there's you can run into some trouble in this hole. If you, uh, if you push it too far, there is a lot of bushes you can end in, so you don't want to do that, and you can catch some stuff early as well that you don't want to land in either. Yeah, there's like a 20-foot low ceiling there, but you can also go over the top, as Luke is doing. Um, you just have to have a little more pop than the average player. He just didn't get that quite to turn the whole way. The wind was swirling, so we really weren't sure what was going to happen. Mine, mine turned over, and we thought it was a tailwind. So, Looks like Tree is just playing for an easy three. There is a sucker's gap off to the right that you can throw. There's a little window in... I was a sucker and I threw it. I hit it, but if you don't, you can end up in a lot of trouble. And this is where the hole gets really difficult. Um, on camera, the tee shot looks pretty pretty safe, but those gaps get smaller and smaller as the wind picks up. Yeah, he held over and he got just in front of that front right corner, so he should have an easy up and down for his four. Here he is, just in front of those trees. It's a little hyzer with an approach... Yeah, and he's putting for his four. Could be trouble averted if he can get that one to go. And Dan skipped kind of just in the long grass, but still an easy up and down. Puts under the basket. Easy three right there, and and that's what I'm. That's what I was saying is, he finished just short enough. But if he threw it any further, you can run into a lot of trouble because everything behind that basket is trouble, and you do not want to be there. And I leaked through the trees, but I had like a weird distance. So I threw a little soft forehand and got through. Luke with the pin high. Yep, 80, little high footer. hyzer bid. It's not going to go too far from the basket. Looks like Zach got caught up more than it looked like. This is his putt for his four, a little bit longer than he would have hoped. Oh. Yeah, that was great effort too. So. It's like he got nubbed a little bit. And I was a little, little further than I like to be too. But my putter was feeling good that day. I wasn't really worried about those 30... 20 to 30 footers yeah everything's been looking solid yeah golf gets pretty easy when you uh you make all your circle putts it's crazy gotta get in that zen zone when you're putting so yeah zach's struggling a little bit but like i said he had never played the course before um so it's it's a hard one especially as the wind keeps swirling Hole 14, considered another uh, par 4. The distance is 442 feet. Same kind of scenario off the tee pad. It is a tight shot. You need to throw a very specific shot straight, kind of pipe it if you can, get it up here. And then once you go about halfway, it slowly climbs in elevation. You can't really notice it right off the tee pad, but it does climb up a little bit. And then once you get up here, there's a couple bushes and a couple trees. But right here, this is a tight tee shot, so you got to kind of pipe it straight what'd you throw there that's my flippy grace um i just want to hit the gap and i'm not going to get a two so i can hit the gap on highs with that grace and throw it soft and it just flips up and i want a little more height but it was fine looks like he kind of got cut up a little bit but yeah and if you just throw if you pipe something straight and have it kind of finish a little right you'll be open and can get an easy three on this hole yeah you just don't want to leak it inside left um halfway up that fairway that left side gap is as jared would call it a sucker's gap yep and getting through that the last 110 feet of the hole is not what you're looking for Yep, that was pretty much ideal. And we always have this 130-foot upshot. Maybe a little less, but just a hyzer approach off to the right. Yeah, everything to the right's open, so you just kind of want to hold it out. Looks like he's throwing it up high, letting the stability of the disc bring it back left. Perfect. Almost frames her up. 
and I'm betting you're, well, we got Tree here, so he's probably going to do the same thing, just kind of throw. He's actually throwing kind of straight at it, low. He's good at those low straight shots. Yeah, he pushed far enough right that uh, he could actually kind of look, look straight at the basket. Um, and I'm like in this weird, I don't want to, I don't know how high or wide I really want to go. And then I kind of just soft it um, because it was like short enough. I didn't want to go deep, but I had like that bulge of the trees that came out around the green. So too many variables. You didn't quite know what you wanted to do there. Yeah, I should have yeah. just commit to one. Exactly. Yep. See that bush right there is what I'm saying. It can get in the way, but it looks like he's on the right side. So he probably will have a putt. Yeah. So then I just got kind of this circle's edge putt through this v there's some other small ones that are kind of hard to see and then you see i just hit them i was pretty mad at myself here just because it's like it feels like it was an easy approach like luke did just put it high and wide and don't let yourself hit anything if you miss right you miss right we got dan with this tricky one he, he just keeps finding himself in these little little areas where the where the nature's grabbing him while he's putting yep he's just trying to get comfortable there so and that's always you always want to get comfortable, you know. Take your time, do it within the time limit, and so for a big three, Luke's kind of pulling away. A little pressure to to kind of keep it in in range. Exactly. If There's not Luke... much left on this uh, this round here. Yeah, you just gotta give yourself a chance if Luke makes a mistake, and dead center. Yep, he went through his routine routine and put it right in there. This is for the turkey for Luke. If we consider these par fours, just right on the pole, just dead center. He just has such a smooth, soft putt. Yes, he's he's very methodical like with his putts. It's firm but soft. It's weird. You're probably the only one there walking away with the uh, angry monkey vibes from uh, Family Guy. So. Absolutely. They all made sure I knew, too. No, I'm just kidding. Hole 15, par 3, 290. Um dead straight over this bush that you can't really see the basket on an elevated T. You kind of want to go straight over the bush or play off to the left here and just give yourself a putt. Um, there's also the big hyzer route that you'll see Luke probably going and a couple other bigger arms. Um, it was just a little swirly, so it was hard to, to know really how wide to play it. Up and over. Yep. He was trying to say, he was saying that there was no there's no middle gap. And I guess if you can throw that hyzer consistently, I would too. And I bet Tree is going for the middle gap. Yeah, it's definitely a tight, probably 30, 40 foot fairway gap. And you got to have just enough height to clear the bushes because the basket comes up quick and there's a tree line close to the back side of the basket. Looks like Zach's lining up the backhand also up the gap. He just leaked his a little too far left, and he caught those branches. Otherwise, it looked really good. And I'm just throwing my blue buzz. And, uh, yeah, dead straight. Looks like you're pinned high, just left. Yep, and it's a lot closer than I even thought. I thought I was a little more left, but in circle. Dan with the great bid from circle two. And Luke's hyzered out a little bit more than he had hoped. It took a lot out of the equation, though, with that hyzer, and then he's still in the fairway, so clean clean putt at least. Yeah, he's pretty much guaranteeing himself a circle two or better putt. Just a little low. He, he's not happy with it. Yeah, we had a pretty good tailwind on these putts. So my buzz dead straight was a lot better than I even thought. Yeah, yeah I thought you were going to be a little further left than that, but yeah, that was great. So I was able to get one on Dan and Luke there. That's why I was so upset about the previous one on the easy, the soft par four, just to not get to three and just lose a stroke in a stupid way. Because it's, Luke had uh, been playing pretty well. Yes, he is. Tap in three right here. So we got three threes and a two. All right, hole 16 is 296 feet. You have a few different options here. Up the middle is, it's tight. 
it is fair though. Um, just got to throw something low and straight. And then right here you're at the crest of the hill and it'll work its way down. The other option is out wide and left, either a backhand turnover or a sidearm and just crash the trees. I really liked that. I just had to miss that one tree that it was just tracking the whole way. I'm just going straight fairway, trying to get that straight skip up the hill and hopefully give myself a circle two putt. Yep, looks like Luke right here is taking his Luna and just doing a turnover. Up high, just let it work. And that should just crash and be sitting up there for a two look. And if not, you know, should be able to scramble a three out of it. Yeah, Dan's going to be taking the uh, straight route, something flippy on a hyzer, and just hoping it glides all the way there, but catches that first tree. <laughs> Looks like Zach's kind of doing the same thing here. He's just flipped a little bit. Yeah, and I don't think, Tree, tree hasn't played this course either, has he? I don't believe so. So half the card's playing blind here, so they're just kind of following others, if you will. Looks yeah. like he should be sitting up there probably for a putt for three. Yep, and then I'm just, I can see the basket, so I'm pretty happy. I'm just throwing a soft little putter, get it to land flat, and slide up to the basket. Yeah, because you're just before the crest, and then Tree's about at the top of the hill, so he's just throwing a putter up there to get up and down for the three. And let's see where Luke is. Oh. Still on tree here. Yeah, Dan kind of grabbed the ground and, and cut out a little bit and came up a little short of circle. Well, that was that was dead center. Yeah, the hit camera doesn't do it justice. It does it does slope downward a decent amount. So he was just trying to play that downward slope and just left it a little low. Yeah, that putter is on fire today. Yeah, those ones were feeling good. And uh, after Dan missing short, I was like, I just can't can't miss short. Yeah, and see this this putter shot right here from Luke. Like I said, he he threw the distance he needed. And it is a little luck up at the green because you don't know what's going to happen in the trees. But he gave himself a good look. And this looks like he's going to get a two. Yeah, if you can get your putter up over this area, like the front side of the circle, it's going to fall down in some manner. Um, so it's just kind of where the, if you play the, pling, the ping pong down, Plinko, actually, not ping pong. This is Zach's putt for his par. Taking his time here. He really wants this putt here. Yep, good, good putt. Yep, good putt. Yes, and Luke got another one on Dan, so he'll be going into a hole 17 with a three-stroke lead over Dan. And then he'll have five on me, who is in third. So he's, he's sitting pretty safe. Hole 17, another soft par 4, 438 feet. You just want to throw something that pushes past this first tree line. Um, you can get as aggressive as you want. You can push this bottom of the hill or even crest the hill and give yourself a long little book, look for two. Um, you just want to get yourself in the fairway. Um, you don't want to push either one of these front left corners of the circle two just because the rough doesn't really give you many looks. Exactly, and it, the mouth is open up there once it climbs up to the hill, so if you can land in that generous area, you can give yourself a good little bid right here. And Yeah, but if you're playing for the three, it's a pretty safe three. Just throw a 350-foot highs or uh, straight shot. Luke's definitely going to be pushing this. Just looks looks like, like he was trying to flex it up there. Yeah, it looks like it came out just a little early. And I'm just going my... Uh, Stable Grace on Heiser and just going to flip it up and push straight through the trees. And, uh, yeah, just glides straight, finishes up there, circle yeah. two, yep. edge of circle three. Left side of the mouth, but he should have, he should be pretty unobstructed to get up and down for the three. And this just held, held that Heiser. Good tree right there, though, to, to sit him down in the fairway. Yeah, otherwise he would have hyzered out and would have had a little bit more of a tricky approach. This is just a pretty shot with the, the colors changing and the, the sun was just beautiful that day. Overlooking this nice little bog area. 
Yeah, that was a good shot by Dan, too. Kind of threw it, flipped a flat, rode a ways, and easy approach. He just leaked his a little wide, but he snuck through. Pin high. Yep, he'll have a putt. This is just Dan Trees in a nutshell. Easy breezy. Little Michael Burnett sighting right there. He drove all the way up from uh, North Carolina just to play the tournament. That's some commitment to the to the cause. And uh, Luke was throwing his zone of last year, trying to push that high left pocket on Heiser, but just leaked it a little too high. So I'm going my understable zone, throwing on Annie and have it pan out flat. Looks like you're right under the basket or close to, so. This is Luke for his three. Obviously not the result he was looking for. Oh, God. Yeah, that, that was... That was very calculated. He knew what he was doing there. Just dropped. This is Zach for his three. Dead center. Great yep. putt. Great putt. Crowd loves it. Yeah, shout out to TD over there. Michael McCarty cheering us on coming down the stretch. Yeah, easy three right there. So we got three threes and then the lone four from Luke. So at this point, coming in 18, 249 feet, Luke pars or anything, he's really safe. He has a five-stroke lead, so he just has to get the fairway here. You want to land up to the left of this tree probably, forehand or, or straight, slight turnover backhand. It's just the tee shot is tight you got to pick a gap and commit very demanding it looks like you're going with the standstill yeah i'm trying to throw like a flippy fair or flippy mid and uh just leak it and hit that middle tree kick out to the left <laughs> it's uh it's like a lot of these holes out here you got to either commit to the standstill or the the abbreviated run up yeah that's a good way of putting it he has pushed pin high just hyzered out He's taking his time right here, lining this up. And, and yeah, that wasn't that wasn't what he's looking for. And looking at the scores right now, there is a battle for second place, so it's tight and let's see what happens here, especially with your guys' shots right there. Yeah, and Luke caught that middle uh, middle set of trees as well, but he advanced way further than me and Dan. Dan's going Tomahawk. First overhand we saw of him today. Yeah, you know, uh, he's he's in a, a little bit of a pickle when he's doing that, but he's trying to scramble to get up there. You're yeah. off to the left here, so. Yeah, I'm trying to throw through that left giant gap that I missed and uh, hit that single tree. So now I got this. I just got to get up and down for my four, and uh, we pin it. We're going to get our four. So we just got to see what Dan does. Luke with the... Tricky footing, but it's pretty wide open up to the, to the top left, so it's a slight turnover with something flippy. Yep. Catches that cabbage up there, but sits down. Looks like he should be able to get up and down right there. So we got Dan for his three from the front side of the bush. This is a elevated basket, and he's also up above. Ooh. Oh, and the roll. That was a series of uh, misfortunes right there. So then we got him coming up for his four. So this would uh, hold second place by one stroke over me because I'm going to get a four as well. Oh no. Yeah, this, uh, I actually walked up. This is when I was walking up to see what was going on. And so we got Harris for his five and a tie for second. Just catching all of it. Yeah, he's in disbelief right now. He's holding his composure. This is Luke for his three, probably 18 feet for the win. Secures. On the pole. Yep, secures it, and he is the two-time Smash Memorial champion right there. Yep, back-to-back. 
first ever back to back? Yes, it is. So that's awesome. And I believe that was for Zach's two, unless he missed his upshot. But I'm pretty sure he he snuck down that hill. And here's for my four, and for second place. Yeah, so there were a little bit of fireworks right there on the last hole. So you kind of snuck in there. Yeah, that's unfortunate to see Dan take those big strokes like that. Um, I'm sure if he would have been looking and paying attention, he probably would have just laid that up for the four to, to take the second. But it's a circle's edge putt, so Dan's going to be that guy that runs it because, I mean, he almost made it. <laughs> yep, 100%. Good job, buddy. Congratulations. Yeah, so that was that was real awesome to see of Luke right there. He has a real bright future. Yeah, so, so we had some hot round of neg ten from Andy D, um, pushing up the leaderboard, um, and then as we saw Luke taking it down, I somehow scrambled my way to take down Dan for second place after he had some mishaps in that final hole. Yeah, that was awesome to watch right there too, kind of sneaking back up in there with that. Yeah, and then uh, as you can see, there's there's some score separation out here with the wind, with the uh, with the tight fairways. Um, it's definitely a unique course if you're ever in the area. Yeah, it's definitely a lot of fun. Like we said, it's kind of like an intermediate course at, at best really, but it's super fun though. So check it out if you're up in uh, the Stanton area, it's kind of central Michigan area. So once again, shout out Luke Taylor, taking it down back to back. Uh, appreciate everyone for watching, and uh, thanks for all the sponsors and Haviland for being the presenting sponsor of the tournament. And if you haven't already, hit that like button and please subscribe. It helps helps out Disc Golf Threads, and then we can get you guys more coverage like this. Thank you guys. Absolutely, thank you guys, and shout out to Jacob Pratt for editing this and helping us film. Thank you guys. See you guys later.